Okay, well done. It's over. Today's Leaving Certificate Higher Level English Paper 2 was a really fantastic paper offering students unprecedented choice. And I hope um, that everybody had a nice selection of questions and that the exam went well for everybody. This was an exam that did exactly what it should do. It tested the key skills that should be developed by the study of this subject over six years of secondary school. Students obviously have to have their material prepared, but this is really not a paper that rewards rote learning. All of the questions were framed in a way which was thoughtful and challenging and required students to think for themselves in an original way. The single text questions, most students would um, have answered on King Lear. The single text questions were just lovely and the King Lear questions were particularly interesting and thoughtful. The first question, which asked students to comment on chaos and confusion in the play and how Shakespeare uses those elements effectively, was just brilliant and broad. It uh, rewarded the student who will think and know the play uh, in great detail, allowing them to talk about things as, you know, as different and as varied as, you know, the role of the fool and the language that he uses, the breakdown of the natural order, the storm in both its literal and its figurative sense. Edmund's use of deception and that, you know, twisty uh, final scene in which we don't know, you know, how things are going to resolve or turn out. A brilliant question designed to reward a student, yes, who knows the play, but mostly designed to reward a student who can think independently and originally. The second question put a big smile on my face. It reminded me greatly of the... Uh, the question from 2017 on Hamlet, which asked about the role of two minor characters. And here we had a question on the fool and Kent, two really interesting characters who do play a very significant role in the play. And the question was framed in such a way as to ask students whether or not their role in the play is um, important. And um, I thought it was a very, very fair pair of questions on King Lear. And hopefully all of those students who went in, having studied that wonderful play, felt that they had a good choice of questions. The comparative section was, you know, equally fair. Lots of choice here again, don't forget. This year, you had the choice of answering all three sections or a question from all three sections when in a normal year, there's only two. This year, the three modes for examination were general vision and viewpoint, cultural context and theme and issue. And I suppose the problem that a lot of you would have had was picking the question because there were nice questions in each particular, um, set in each for each genre. I really like the general vision and viewpoint section. I do anyway. I think it's a really interesting section. And there was a lovely question on whether or not the students found um, the text unsettling or disturbing and whether or not that influences our general vision and viewpoint. But there were nice options in team and issue and in cultural context as well. Very fair questions which would reward a student who understands how to write in the comparative spirit and questions which were allowed students to draw on their knowledge of two or three texts depending on the questions that they pick to answer. Finally then, poetry. What a lovely set of poetry questions. The unseen poetry question was uh, based on a poem by Louise Gregg, a lovely poem, actually really interesting, you know, filled with figurative language and numerous obvious poetic techniques, allowing students to comment on the poetry use of language. Both questions were framed in an interesting way, in a thoughtful fashion, as was the, the case with the, with the entire paper. Although I do feel that most students answering the Unseen Poetry section might have gone for the, the first question, which was an A and B uh, question. Maybe the second question, the wording of the second question was a little bit more complex and a little bit more challenging. And then we come to the study poetry. There were five poets on this year and all three of the Irish poets came up. Seamus Heaney at last made his appearance in a very nice question asking about his, you know, a capacity to transform the ordinary and the mundane and to give them significance, which makes his poetry interesting and, and allows him to communicate his themes. There was a really beautiful question on Van Boland, which, you know, was, I, I was really happy to see it because last year's Boland question, while a really good question, was quite difficult, the question which asked about whether her work was evocative and provocative in terms of the imagery. This one, much more straightforward, asking about how she uses narrative techniques to explore her themes. I imagine a lot of students would have been very happy to see that question. The Paul Durkin question, a little bit more challenging, asked about mood and tone in his poetry and how he employs those um, elements. Again, if you know Paul Durkin's poetry, nothing hugely challenging there, but probably the Heaney and the Boland questions a little easier. 
The other two poets prescribed are um, examined this year with John Keats and uh, Sylvia Platt. Two nice questions, nothing too difficult, and I'm sure students who were looking to answer on those two poets were happy with the questions. And if they wrote thoughtful, carefully planned, purposeful answers, hopefully they will be successful. I'm delighted for the class of 2021. They've had a really difficult year. You guys have worked so hard in really, you know, extraordinary, unprecedented circumstances. It's over now. Put it behind you. Forget about the Leaving Cert English exam, but don't forget about those wonderful books, those wonderful poems, those wonderful plays you've read over the last six years. Bring it with you into your life. Literature is a friend. Keep it with you. It'll help you through the tough times.